Known as Asia's new Junket King, Alvin Zhou, 47, is the CEO of Junket operator Sun City Group in Macau. He also holds a prestigious title in China's political establishment, a member of the Guangdong Provincial Committee of the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference. If you remember Mandy Liu as a model, you may have heard that Mandy Liu is the mistress of Alvin Zhou. Alvin Zhou has four children with Mandy Liu while still being married to entrepreneur Heidi Chan. His personal life has provided loads of tabloid fodder. But Joe's behavior hasn't been bad enough to land him in prison until now. Almost without warning, on November 26, 2021, authorities of Wenzhou City in Zhejiang Province issued an arrest warrant for Joe. The next day, Macau police arrested him. The Macau police announced that they had busted the illegal gambling and money laundering operation of Zhou. Before that, the Zhejiang Wenzhou Public Security Bureau announced that since 2007, Zhou had set up gambling halls in casinos in Macau and other places. In 2016, he opened online gambling platforms in the Philippines and other places and organized Chinese citizens to gamble in the offshore gambling halls he contracted and the gamblers participated in cross-border online gambling activities. In addition, Joe used illegal channels such as underground money changers to provide gamblers with financial settlement services, forming a cross-border gambling criminal syndicate and developing more than 80,000 members in China involving exceptionally large sums of money. Macau is the only place in China where gambling is legal. Macau casinos have surpassed Las Vegas in the U.S. to become the world's number one gambling city since 2006. Gaming agents are key players in Macau's casino industry, which are divided into the main casino and the VIP lounge. The main casino is for the general public with a low per capita spending and is mainly driven by tourists. The VIP lounges cater to VIP customers. They receive more than 30 million gamblers each year. Yet, the few VIPs who use the VIP lounges account for the bulk of Macau's gaming revenue. At the height of the industry in 2013, VIP lounge operations accounted for 66% of overall casino revenue. The majority of VIP clients in Macau casinos are brought in by agents who provide a full range of services, including food, drink, entertainment, and most importantly, financial arrangements of credit funding. Those with status aren't required to come to the casino. What's commonly seen in the VIP lounges are agents holding the phones and waiting for bets to be placed from the other side of the line. Born in Macau, Joe worked as a hustler soliciting customers at casinos in his early years before he was taken under the wing of a Macau mob boss. He was highly skilled as a casino agent. In 2007, he founded the Sun City Group dedicated to running a VIP lounge. Who is the mainstay of Macau's VIP lounges? Well, the powerful CCP officials, of course. According to a 2018 study by the Macau Polytechnic Institute, Chinese government officials and executives at state-owned enterprises account for half of Macau's VIP gamblers, and they contributed two-thirds of Macau's gaming revenue. How much do Chinese officials love to gamble in Macau? Chinese media have reported many such gambling cases. For example, in a southwestern city, an official in charge of propaganda and a director of the local radio and television bureau used 200 million RMB of public funds, or 31 million US dollars, to gamble in Macau. They lost 16 million US dollars. A vice mayor of a relatively large city in northeastern China flew to Macau several times for gambling sprees, diverting and embezzling as much as 520,000 US dollars at one time. When studying at the party school of the CCP Central Committee, this vice mayor's mind wasn't on studying Marxism, but on the two books he carried with him, Selected Gambling Techniques and 108 Practical Gambling Techniques. Although he was only a low-ranking official in a poverty-stricken county, this official was generous in gambling, losing about 4.42 million US dollars in Macau. There have been numerous stories like this, but for a long time, the central government of the CCP seemed to have turned a blind eye to it. What makes Joe's Sun City Group different from other casinos is that he used the internet to create an online gambling platform. 
Its online platform is known as the world's leading and Asia's largest, with online gambling licenses in the Philippines and Cambodia. The casino and web server are located outside of China, and gamblers in mainland China can see a panoramic view of the casino in high definition by turning on their computers and cell phones and logging on to the platform. Chinese media outlet Southern Weekly reported in 2015 that with the escalation of government regulation, Chinese officials had gone from being physically present in VIP lounges to remotely instructing their agents. Now, with large online platforms, agents become optional, and those who want to gamble can do so directly through their computers and cell phones. According to the case briefing released by the Wenzhou Public Security Bureau, as of July 2020, the cross-border gambling crime syndicate led by Zhou had developed a total of 199 shareholder-level agents, more than 12,000 gambling agents, and more than 80,000 gambling members in China. Six months earlier, in May 2021, a press conference held by Wenzhou police revealed that the amount involved in cross-border gambling in 2020 was as high as approximately 132 million U.S. dollars. It's worth noting that two years ago in 2019, the CCP's official media, Economic Information Daily, published an article stating that the Philippines and Cambodia Sun City online gambling platforms controlled by the new Asian junket king, Alvin Zhou, had penetrated deeply into China, with gamblers in all provinces, and the scale and number of participants continuing to expand. The amount of money gambled on the Sun City network in China is more than a trillion RMB each year, equivalent to nearly twice the annual revenue of the Chinese lottery, with annual profits topping tens of billions of RMB, and these funds flow abroad through underground money changers. According to Chinese business and financial media Kaishin.com, gambling is now embedded in virtually the entire Chinese internet ecosystem. The servers used by gambling sites are usually located outside of China. The websites within China don't directly provide payment settlements. Instead, various agents connecting up the services of different internet companies complete the entire gambling chain. Ultimately, agents and gambling syndicates within China help settle and move money through channels such as digital currencies and underground money banks. The report two years ago didn't make much of an impact at the time. In a press conference on July 13, 2019, in addition to claiming that he didn't commit the violations mentioned in the report, Zhou also said that he wouldn't pursue legal liability with any media for this incident. But it was already a signal to show Joe was in danger, only to be ignored by the public. In all probability, during the course of his business development in mainland China, Joe had the backing of influential figures who held power at the time. They now no longer had power, and when Xi Jinping wanted to crack down on them further, Joe was implicated. In addition to gambling, Alvin Joe holds multiple identities as a film producer, executive producer, and actor. On November 27, 2021, the Southern Weekly published an article titled, Macau Gambling Tycoon Was Arrested Using Movies to Launder Money? The Beijing-based Xinjiang News also published an article titled, The Business Map of Bana Film Group Behind the Movie The Battle of Lake Chongjing. In the past decade or so, Zhou Sun City Group has invested in 65 films. According to public records, Bona Film approached Zhou to finance the film The Battle at Lake Chongjing in July 2019, after receiving the assignment of shooting the patriotic film. The box office revenue of The Battle at Lake Chongjing was reported to have 680 million US dollars, surpassing the 400 million Marvel movie Shang-Chi. At the time, many people also suspected the red movie was being used behind the scenes to launder money. It's a known secret that people launder money through the entertainment industry. Once an industry insider disclosed how this kind of money laundering worked, for example, a production company invests in a film or TV drama. The budget for recruiting an actor is set at 100 million RMB. Two contracts are made, one for 100 million, taxed to the actor, and the other for 10 million, which is most likely what the actor actually gets. Large sums of dirty money can be laundered in the name of production fees, astronomical fees for paying celebrities, etc. As can be seen, casinos, money laundering, and movies can pretty much form a complete industrial chain. Since 2015, Xi Jinping's government has been campaigning against corruption. 
In October 2018, on the eve of Xi Jinping's trip to the opening ceremony of the Hong Kong and Zhuhai Macau Bridge, a senior Macau official, the director of the liaison office of the Central People's Government in Macau, had fallen off a building and died. Although official media said the man suffered from depression, rumors circulated at the time that it was in reality related to Xi Jinping's trip to Hong Kong and Macau to purge the outflow of capital. As the sudden arrest of Joe shows, the struggling CCP government has had to sacrifice Macau's gaming industry to accomplish several important goals. These include curbing China's corrupt officials and powerful second-generation red elites from squandering public money in casinos, curbing the outflow of capital against the backdrop of an increasingly depleted treasury and dried-up foreign exchange reserves, and tightening control of the financial sector by Xi Jinping's faction to prevent his political rival, former party leader Jiang Zemin, from using the old financial network to create havoc and chaos overseas. A study by HSBC said that 90% of Macau's VIP lounge revenue is generated by agents and that any crackdown on them would have a serious impact on Macau's gaming revenue. After the arrest, J.B. Morgan Chase published a report arguing that the arrest of Joe would have a significant negative impact on Macau's gaming agents and VIP lounge industry. It's expected that VIP lounge revenues from gaming agents will shrink by 30% to 50% in the coming weeks. Joe is the largest and most prominent representative of the Macau gaming agency groups. His Sun City business accounts for 40 to 45% of the agency market and approximately 15% of Macau's overall gaming revenue in 2019. After his arrest, the shares of Sun City Group and Summit Asset Holdings, both owned by Joe, were suspended on November 29th, and the share price of Sun Entertainment, in which Joe holds a 34.49% stake, also fell 27% on that day. All the projections are, in our opinion, overly optimistic. Such a major campaign against Macau's gambling industry, once it gets off the ground, could scare Chinese corrupt officials as well as China's second generation of the red elite and the wealthy. It has been reported that Macau is now discussing a bill to set up a Communist Party branch in the casinos, which would be able to investigate the accounts of corrupt officials at any time. For people who like to gamble, there is Singapore close by and Las Vegas afar. So why come to the small island of Macau to seek bad luck? Thus, the future of casinos in Macau looks very bleak. In all likelihood, it's not the intention of the CCP to destroy Macau's gaming industry. It's just that with China's economy on a downward trend, keeping the money from flowing to Macau and out of China, but being controlled in the hands of the CCP, is what the situation dictates. Of course, whether China's economy will go down the drain isn't what Chinese officials are worried about now. What some of them are most worried about is the list of 80,000 VIPs in the hands of Zhou. How many officials will be exposed by this list? And how many sectors will be shaken up? We will continue to watch.